Should I start? Yeah, please. Okay. Hi, I'm Dr. Islam. I'm one of the doctors in this clinic. Am I talking with Mr. Bakur, 28 years old? Yes, doctor. Okay. How do you want to be addressed? Mr. Bakur is okay. That's right? fine. Yes. Okay. Um, can you tell me what brings you here today and how can I help you? Uh, yes, doctor. Actually, I have got um, a cough. I have got also... Mm -hmm. Uh, processes. It is getting more for the past 10 years, doctor. And I took too, too many uh, medications and still mm -hmm. uh, I, I do not feel well. It didn't give me any relief. So please help me, doctor. Well, I'm so sorry to hear that and probably we can help you, okay? You said that you have cough for the last 10 years, okay? Yes. Okay, how did it start? It started or gradually? I do not remember really, doctor, but uh, I feel it is mm -hmm. gradually getting worse. Then worse, okay. And is it uh, just uh, productive? I mean, with flame, is there any flame? Uh, yes, doctor. There is okay. flame. Flame. And since it started, there was flame on that time, so just any recent change? Um, and, at, at first, doctor, uh, I had asthma, actually. Mm -hmm. And I went mm -hmm. to my GB. He started me on some inhalers. Okay, but mm -hmm. that didn't help. And over time, I feel that it's getting worse, doctor. And uh, every medication I use is not really helping. Mm, okay, okay uh, coming to the points. Okay, just uh, and you know, have you noticed you anything makes your cough uh better? I mean, any medications or any anything? No, doctor. As I remember, nothing is helping. Mm -hmm. Anything makes it worse? Any exertions or any activity? No, doctor. Mm. Okay. And you also said uh, that you have some shortness of the breath. Is it for the same time with the cough? Yes, doctor. Mm. Okay. And I have noticed that in you, uh, anything makes the shortness of the breath or, or anything makes it better? Like what, doctor? Any activity makes it tense? Can again, please, doctor? Any activity, I mean, when you work or just do daily activity. Does Sometimes it, 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 it does get worse while walking, doctor, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you said that your, your cough is, I mean, there is some flame, okay? Mm -hmm. And is it, uh, can I uh, know the, uh, may know the color, any color? What about the color of your flame? Um, sometimes green, sometimes yellow. Sometimes mm -hmm. white, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything makes uh anytime you notice there is any blood streak or any red color. No, doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay, and any noisy respirations? Yeah, sometimes I I do feel noisy, yes, doctor, especially at night. At night, okay. Yeah. And at which part of the night? Is it in the early night or late night? Throughout, even during Throughout. the day, sometimes I, I do get the same noisy chest. Doctor. Currently, I do have the noisy chest. Mm -hmm. Noisy chest, okay. And uh, do you use any extra pill at the night times? No. Okay. Fine. I'd like to ask a few other questions regarding your uh, cough and shortness. Of the any, have you noticed there any uh, um, spot or bleeding through your nose? Any nasal crust? And sometimes, yes, doctor, I do get uh, stuffiness in the nose, yeah. No, yeah, okay. Okay, any, 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 any time have you noticed any blotting in your uh, nasal stuff? I mean, any bleeding? Can I, from can I, I do not have it, but it does happen sometimes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Happens sometimes. Do you have any raised body temperature? No. Any lumps and bumps? Any other fever? Not that I'm aware of, doctor. Okay, any change in your weight? Change in voice? No. Wait, wait, change in your weight. Weight? Yeah, doctor, mm -hmm. I have lost, I have lost weight. For, okay, how, how much kilogram over how long period of time? Not sure really, doctor, but it has always been difficult for me to gain some weight. As you can see, I'm... Mm -hmm. I'm really thin, yeah. 
Okay, and definitely it is not intentional, right? Sorry. And, 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 and it's it's not intentional. No, it is not intentional. Okay, okay. And uh, any recent change in your diet recently? Have you any change in your diet? No, no. Okay. okay. Do you have any chest pain? No, doctor. Any racing and pacing of your heart? No. Okay. Any leg swelling? No. Do you use, use any extra pillow in the night? No, times? doctor. No. Okay. I'm comfortable okay. with one bill. Yeah. Okay. Well, fine. And I would like to ask you the question. You say that you have a uh, uh, shortness of the all the times. Do you have any allergy, particularly to any dust or any medication? Any food? Not, uh, I guess uh, the asthma is allergy, doctor, right? Because whenever I'm exposed mm -hmm. to cold weather or some dust, mm -hmm. also sometimes, um, mm -hmm. I feel that the cough and processes will get worse sometimes. Okay, wow. Well, so my Gibi, he told me that uh, it's related to the asthma itself. Asthma itself. Okay. Okay. And uh, do you have any asthma problems? I mean, any bronchial asthma? asthma? Yeah, yeah as I mentioned, doctor. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, apart from the asthma, do you have any past medical history I should bear up? Like what, doctor? Uh, any any chest problems or any heart problems? Yeah, this chest problem, doctor, is uh, ongoing for the past 10 years. Apart from this, mm -hmm. I'm not aware of any other medical problems at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, now coming to the asthma, how about your asthma control? It's not well controlled, doctor. Uh, as I mentioned mm -hmm. previously, uh, mm -hmm. I took the inhalers and uh, many cough syrups without any relief. Many remains, okay. And do, uh, did you hospitalize in past for your asthma problems? Um, because of infections to the chest, yes. Mm. Uh, when was the last one? And did the doctor diagnose any, any triggering last, factor? The last one was, yeah, the last one was uh, one year ago. One year ago, okay. Yeah. Is it diagnosed by the, your GP or how did he diagnose? Is it confirmed? It, or it was it was diagnosed with, by GP, yes, by my GP. Okay, by any any blood test or just any blood test? May I know that? I do not remember doing any uh, blowing test. Okay, okay, fine. I'd like to ask you the questions, okay? So you can reply by uh, say yes or no, okay? Do you so, have any 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 rash or joint pain in here of your body? No, no. Any muscle pain? No. Any red eye or gritty eye? No. Any recent flu like illness? Uh, no. Okay. Okay, fine. Uh, uh, may I know uh, about your uh, family history? Okay, uh, you said that uh, you have asthma, but uh, okay, and any other family member having same kind of illness? No. Any heart problems or chest problems running in your family? Not that I'm aware of, doctor. Okay. Okay. Uh, I I'd like to check the medication list. You said that you was taking some uh medications, inhaler, I put from these medications. May I, may I check your medication list? Yeah, this is the medications. He's taking uh, blue inhaler. I'm taking this blue inhaler and this brown inhaler. In mm -hmm. addition to many, many cough syrups I, I have tried cough. previously, doctor, without any without any relief, yeah. Oh, without any relief, okay. Any recent change in your medications? I mean, any change in the inhaler dose or frequency? No, doctor. Okay, uh, um, any counter drugs are you taking apart from this inhaler? No. Any multi means or any drugs from the pharmaceutical company? Um, sometimes I do take some antibiotics, doctor, especially when the cough gets worse, and, and then uh, uh, sometimes I will get okay. fever also. So during mm -hmm. that time, my GP usually uh, uh, mm -hmm. gives me some okay. antibiotics, but for mm -hmm. short duration of time, and then it will be stopped. Stop. Okay. Well, I'd like to examine you. Is that all right? First of all, I would like to have a good looks about your uh, general looks. Is there any cacic shape? Okay. Or... As, as you can see in the picture, young man mm -hmm. who is wearing a mask. Yeah. 
Okay, Same right. Or in okay. my field to some extent, yes. Okay, okay fine. I would like to uh, take the uh, 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 hand to see any clubbing. Negative. Okay, any anemia or pale or anemia? He's a little bit, a little bit pale, yes. Okay, so, okay. Then I would like to take the test uh, to see any crackles. Uh, positive, bilateral. Okay. Sorry, bilateral positive. Positive, positive, yes. Is it coarse or fine? Is it coarse or fine? Yes. Why exactly? Is it bilateral, bloy or apical? Uh, bilateral um, throughout the chest. Bilateral throughout the. Mm. Okay, and can you repeat that? Is it coarse or fine? Sorry? It, is it coarse or fine? Can you repeat it? Coarse, coarse crackles. Coarse, okay. Is it altered with okay. cough? Yes, positive. Okay, fine. I would like to check the pulmonary area to see any palpable thrill or anything. Uh, pulp uh, pulmonary hypertension with the pulmonary hypertension or not? Negative. Okay, I'd like to have a quick examination uh, on the precordium to exclude any mm -hmm. any murmur. Negative. Okay, like I'd like to check the pedal edema. Is there any pain in the legs? Okay, fine. No pain, doctor. Okay, uh, so uh. Do you smoke, uh, Mr. Uh, Bakul? I'm so sorry to ask that. No, uh, I, I do not smoke, doctor. Uh, okay. By the way, there is not only crackles, but crackles and wheeze also, okay? Mm -hmm. else? Okay. Do you drink alcohol? No. Okay. Do you drive? No, I don't drive. Okay. So uh, what do you do for your livings? Uh, previously, doctor, I used to be, uh, I used to work as a mechanic, but currently I stopped mm -hmm. because uh, my fiance, she left me, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm unable to do anything because of this medical condition. No, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Do you need any social support in the room or homes? Uh, yes, doctor. Okay, this regard will involve the social workers. They will help you. Okay. So I would like to uh, 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 know a few other questions. Okay, did you recently contact with any TB patient? No. Okay. Okay. Any any recent traveling anywhere? No. Okay. Oh, uh, fine. And any, any uh, change in your water works in terms of my frequency water, of my water work is fine. No. Okay. Any change in your bowel works? No. Any headache or blowing of vision? No headache, doctor. Okay. Any difficulty when you try to calm your hair? No. Okay. Uh, may I know any, any, do you have any, uh, recent, I mean, any, okay, any clotting disorder? Do you mean a do you have any? Okay, What fine. do you mean by clotting disorder, doctor? Uh, I mean, any, any, blood disorder that uh, tend to clot and uh, block the blood channel. Uh, no, Is there any Fine. What's your concern, Mr. Bakker? Uh, yes, doctor. Uh, what's wrong with me? So, uh, uh, well, uh, from talking to him after uh, examining, we are thinking number of possibilities in your case. However, in your case, looks likely more uh, due to uh, bronchitis, okay? Never bother with the germs or uh, there is uh, abnormal uh, dilatations of the ear uh, sac and also accumulation of the uh, some secretions within these sacs tends to prone to develop recurrent infections, okay? That's why you are mm -hmm. having some cough and shortness of the breath. So what we're planning to do, we'll do some blood tests scan of your chest, uh, as well as also test of your uh, flame for further analysis, okay? Once all mm -hmm. the test results will come, we'll involve the multidisciplinary team, including chest physician, uh, occupational workers, social workers, uh, to give you the proper and best care. Is there any other concern? Uh, no, doctor, thank you. So uh, okay. I will wait for the test results. Yeah. So how, how, how does it sound to you? Okay, is there any, any preference to particular treatment plan do you have any other anything you want to say or any 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 concern i performed this i have no idea doctor i will wait for mm -hmm. your, your assessment okay. 
Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, just uh, last one question. Anything you're thinking that might be the reason for your conditions? Any particular things you... you I have no idea, just... Doctor, because first of all, mm -hmm. first I thought okay. it might be related to asthma. Okay, mm -hmm. time up. Okay, fine. But asthma and treatment does not seem to be to be helpful in my case. Okay, time mm -hmm. up, by the way. Okay. Uh, examiner's question. So, Doctor, please, uh, what's your diagnosis or differential diagnosis? Uh, yeah, I have a uh, differential for this case. First of all, uh, it is uh, um, bronchitis, okay? And mm -hmm. it also uh, acute infective exacerbation of obstructive airway disease, most likely bronchial as well. So there are two differentials. And so it could be also a... My first one is... Uh, Bronchitis. Bronchitis. Acute infective exacerbation of obstructive airway disease, most likely bronch bronchitis. So, what's your final diagnosis? Is it COPD or bronchitis or asthma? It is. It is bronchitis. Okay. So, what would be the underlying diagnosis? Uh in this uh, patients, patient as having recurrent. I mean, um, childhood allergy, okay, uh, mm -hmm. as well as uh, some um, recurrent infections, like a patient was taking infection, uh, recurrent uh, antibiotics. So I think in this case, uh, it could be aspergillosis, okay, although I could not appreciate any other things, but patient has recurrent history of allergy, okay. Okay, so and it could be also due to infections. I mean, asthma itself could be caused due to. Okay, so why why did you did you put bronchoaspergillosis on top of your differential diagnosis as a cause for the under uh, underlying cause for the bronchitis? As per, a patient give the history of some allergies. Okay, uh, so okay. allergies uh, is 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 uh, closely related to. Uh, as per I mean, patient has some allergic manifestation. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. excellent. Yeah. So how are you? Got, got... Uh, so this patient actually demonstrated no clubbing. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Yeah, there is no clubbing. I asked that. So do you do you still want to think about bronchitis as your your differential diagnosis or your diagnosis? Um, yeah, it, it could be part of other diseases like allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, okay, causes proximal bronchitis. So, uh, yeah, I will think about bronchitis as a part of as, uh, aspergillosis, APA, okay? So, so sure, you, you want to think about bronchitis when there is no clubbing. Are you sure? Sometimes a uh, patient may uh, present with, without Are you clubbing. sure? So, yeah, I, I in my yeah, I I will okay, say. Okay, so how are you going to investigate this patient? Okay, so uh, first of all, I do uh, uh admit the patients. I will do A B Z bedside urine diagnostic urine test, complete blood count including uh, inflammatory marker yes, a C reactive protein. Then I'll also mm -hmm. do chest X ray P F U. Okay, and uh for get better view A C C T. And it's put on analysis to uh, see the microscopy bio biochemistry as well as a acid for bacillus uh, and as well as gram screening. Mm -hmm. uh, I always like to do lung function test to see the is it uh, to exclude the obstructive or restrictive, as well as a six minutes of white test uh, and uh, uh, from pulmonary rehab uh, uh, six minutes white test. Okay. So what do you expect to see in the CT test? Acer CT, I will expect you have some uh, signal ring as well as. Uh, what does it signify? Yeah. What does the signal ring appear and signify? Yes. Honeycombing and sometimes uh, reticular nodular shadowing. Okay, as well Regarding as the line. You mentioned you mentioned the signal ring appearance. What does it signify? It uh. It signifies. Yeah, it it, it, it signifies uh, um, 
the cystic, I mean, alveolar damage followed by formation of a uh, ring like appearance. Yeah. You mean the elitation of the bronchi compared to the yeah. adjacent blood vessel, right? Yeah, 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 right. Okay, so how are you going to manage this patient? First of all, non pharmacological management include patient education counseling about. Uh, sorry, this before, before the management, uh, any more investigations you would like to mention before the management? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, to exclude the uh, complications. I mean, uh, I would like to do a CG mm -hmm. echocardiogram to exclude the pulmonary hypertensions. Okay. Excellent. What else? Uh, yeah, and as well as I would like to uh, to uh, find the underlying cause. I would like to do uh, allergic precipitant. I mean, uh, aspergillus precipitant Excellent. IgG. Yeah. Uh, as say, well as uh, uh, I would like to. And serum LDAs, in this case, lymphoma can be underlying cause. We don't know. So that's why I'd like to exclude. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Excellent, yes. excellent. Dr. Islam, uh, I like that you are really well organized, by the way. Uh, your okay. history was very nice. And well okay. organized, um, okay. Patients, but uh, uh, take care. Mm -hmm. Take care. Uh, yeah. By the way, uh, time is up, by the way. Uh, okay. you, need to, you need to be quick, a little bit quick, when presenting your findings, investigations. You have to have a very clear... Uh, and systematic way of mentioning the investigations, mentioning the management plan. By the way, if the time didn't allow you to finish all the list of investigation or the management plan, they will they will consider that you did not say it. For example, you did not mention uh, um, asparagia, uh, uh, precipitant for asparagillosis. Okay, you know that you should do this test. However, the time didn't allow you to say it. Immediately, they will minus you in. Is can e clinical judgment. This doctor put yeah. aspergillosis or allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis as his first differential, and this was correct actually. However, he did not mention any investigation to search for this diagnosis. Okay, so when you mention the investigation, you need to be quick. You need to have a very clear way of presenting your investigation and the management plan also. Okay, uh, most importantly, while thinking about investigations, you have to mention investigation to confirm the diagnosis, investigation to search for the underlying cause, investigation to search for complications, sometimes even association. In this case, by the way, uh, polycystic kidney disease might be association. Bronchiectasis mm -hmm. is sometimes associated with polycystic kidney disease. Okay, so mm -hmm. never mention a differential without mentioning investigation for that differential, a management plan for that differential. This is really Does very important. Have... Again, sir? So can when you mention, last... okay, mm. when you mention the investigation, you need to mention investigation for the clinical diagnosis. For example, this is bronchiectasis, right? Mm -hmm. I will mention investigation to confirm bronchiectasis. And then when the examiner asks you about what could be the underlying reason for this bronchiectasis, Okay, you said allergic bronchial uh, pulmonary as uh, aspergillosis, right? When you mm -hmm. come to the investigation, you have to mention some investigations to confirm this diagnosis. It is not like a, a fantasy of reaching the diagnosis. No, we need to treat this patient. So if the most likely diagnosis is allergic bronchial pulmonary aspergillosis, I need to search for this diagnosis, confirm this diagnosis to start treatment. And by the way, this diagnosis is treatable. If you just start the steroid for this patient, he will have dramatic response if the underlying diagnosis is allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. Okay, so take care. When you mention a diagnosis, mention investigation and, and treatment or management plan for that diagnosis. And investigation and treatment for the underlying cause. Investigation and treatment for the complications. Okay, I have got many feedbacks that the candidate will be deducted in skill E. I mean the clinical judgment because you did not mention investigation for the underlying diagnosis. Okay, but anyway, you saved you saved yourself at at last, and you mentioned uh, uh, precipitant for aspergillosis. You need to add to this also uh, immunoglobulin E level is in field mm -hmm. level uh, is in fields is in field count. Okay, just to finish the the issue of uh, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, and then. So with the skill E, still I will, I will give you four out of four. Skill F, managing patient concern, four out of four, because you have explained the diagnosis, the correct diagnosis to the patient. Skill G, because 
you were sensitive, polite, you did not uh, uh, cause any emotional discomfort. So again, four out of four. However, in skill, uh, uh, skill F, try not to repeat the same question again and again. You ask many questions regarding asthma. I needed to tell you that I did not improve on inhalers three times. So if the examiner is tough, he's going to comment within skill F that you did not demonstrate active listening. You kept asking the same question while the surrogate already mentioned to you twice that he is not improving on inhalers. This is very dangerous. Take care. If you if you check the examiner's sheet, it is mentioned clearly within a skill F. In order for the examiner to give you a satisfactory mark, you have to demonstrate active listening. Listen carefully to what the surrogate is telling you, okay? Then regarding, uh, regarding skill C, which is the communication skills, you mentioned, are you in contact with TB patient? Okay. Maybe he is in contact with a TB patient, but he doesn't know that he has got TB. Maybe the patient himself is not yet diagnosed. So the best question for this is, are you in contact with any coughing patient or any patient who has got cough? And also you mentioned clotting disorders. Do you have any clotting disorder? Any history of clot? Any history of bleeding? This is a, a, a better way to, to ask about uh, clottings, okay? Then most importantly, when it comes to skill D, the differential diagnosis, your differential was, was okay. However, within the history, I did not feel that you are searching about the underlying cause for bronchiectasis. Okay, for example, you need to ask, I know that the patient is a little bit young, okay, but you need to ask him, are you married? Are you sexually active? Okay, if he is married or sexually active, do you have any kids? Have you been trying to father children? Why? Because, for example, let us assume that the patient has got infertility together with bronchiectasis. Mm -hmm. What could be the cause here? Ciliary problems, so primary ciliary. Cystic fibrosis. Exactly. Cystic Either cystic fibrosis, fibrosis or? Partigena. Cystic fibrosis, by the way, can cause infertility. But what is the, uh, the process? How cystic fibrosis causes? Ciliary mortality. Cystic fibrosis. Exactly. Accessible, accessible congenital, congenital absence of the vas difference bilaterally. The issue is uh, motility of the cilia and motility of the sperms. This is not with cystic fibrosis. This is with primary ciliary dyskinesia, primary ciliary dyskinesia syndromes. There are many, by the way. There are many primary ciliary dyskinesia, okay? So we will come to discuss the differentials anyway. However, my point was you need to search for the underlying cause of bronchiectasis within your history. Okay, we mentioned the issue of uh, infertility, right? Then within the gastroenterology system, you need to ask specifically about steatoria. I know that you did ask about bowel, uh, changing the bowel habit. However, in such cases, the examiner will expect you to ask specifically for steatoria. Okay, because if this patient has got steatoria and he has got also bronchiectasis, what is the underlying cause? Fibrosis. Exactly. So you need to ask specifically for the underlying cause of bronchiectasis in your history. For because you mentioned jargons and you did not search for you did not ask important questions in the history, I will give you two out of four within uh, skill C. Okay. And then regarding skill D, it was fine. Your first differential diagnosis was bronchiectasis. It was correct. And by the way, when I went to the exam, my case was cartagonal. It was not in long clinical consultation. Now, uh, bronchiectasis start to appear as long clinical consultation. Previously, it was coming only in uh, the respiratory examination. However, recently, there has been some changes in cases. So, this case, for example, appeared in uh, Islamabad Center. So, when I went to the exam at that time, my case in the respiratory system was 
Cartagena syndrome, bronchiectasis, long standing bronchiectasis in a 22 year old male patient. Okay, so he had no clubbing. At that time, he had no clubbing. And this patient also, his name is Bakar, people who are going for uh, the exam in Islamabad Center. Okay, the patient name is Bakar, he is 28 year old. He will have diffuse bronchiectasis, but there is no clubbing. There is no clubbing. By the way, clubbing is not required. It is not very common in bronchiectasis. Yes, one of the differential of clubbing, if there is clubbing, is bronchiectasis and other superior lung disease. However, only around two to three percent of patients with bronchiectasis will have clubbing. Okay, so it is more likely to find clubbing with uh, uh, bronchiectasis without clubbing. When uh, uh, the disease advances, when it is very late stage bronchiectasis, it is more likely to have clubbing, but it is not required for the clinical diagnosis. Why I'm telling you this? Because the candidate who did this case in the exam, mm -hmm. the examiner was pushing her to mention bronchiectasis, but she didn't mention bronchiectasis because the patient had no clubbing. Okay. Eventually, the examiner asked her, what about bronchiectasis? Do you think he has bronchiectasis? Chronic cough, copious sputum production. Do you think bronchiectasis is possible here? She said yes, but again, is that there is no clubbing. The examiner was angry. Who says that bron uh, bronchiectasis have to have uh, cl uh, clubbing? Uh, clubbing is not required for, for the diagnosis. Still, if the patient has got chronic cough, breathlessness, and then he is producing copious amount of uh, perulent sputum. Your first differential diagnosis should be bronchiectasis, okay? So regarding the underlying cause, underlying cause, whenever you have someone who has chronic asthma symptoms or symptoms in keeping with asthma, however, it is not responding to asthma treatment. And then currently he has bronchiectasis, Try to put allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis as your first differential. I was really happy that Dr. Islam put this as his first differential because this is the classical presentation. This is the classical presentation. However, still, you need to put Dr. infections in general. Yeah. Whenever there is someone who has got chronic symptoms in keeping with asthma, wheeze and breathlessness and, and cough and so on. He tried many treatments for asthma, but it is not responding to asthma treatment. Okay. And now he present with bronchiectasis. Think about allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. This is a classical presentation. For this patient, immediately I will request the precipitant for aspergillosis, IgE level, eosinophil count, to confirm the diagnosis. And then when you start the steroid, expect grammatical response to steroid. Okay. So for this patient, the first differential diagnosis is allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. However, let us assume that I don't know. Okay. Still, I can mention some of the common causes. Infection in general, right? Infection should be included. Yeah. You have to include infections in general, whether this is childhood infection or current infection or TB or pneumonia, or AIDS, I will simply mention infection. Okay, so regarding skill D, I was waiting for you to, to uh, 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 skill B, I mean, skill B and skill A, skill A. I was waiting for you to check the apex position. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> during muscular time, just, um... Okay, yeah, I forget it completely. Yeah, actually, if if you do not search for the apex position specifically, you will never find it. In my exam, I tried to 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 palpate the apex position. I couldn't get it. I thought maybe it is behind the rib or because um, of any cause. Maybe the patient has got heart failure or whatever. I wasn't able to detect the apex position, so I was just acting to locate the apex on the right side in the left side sorry in the left side so i found the examiner was commenting 
He wanted to give me invented a sign. If I say the uh, the apex is felt in the left side in position and so on, he will give me invent sign, and this is going to affect skill B. Okay. However, before going to 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 the exam, I said to myself, if I, I meet a patient with bronchiectasis, I will confirm the apex position by auscultation, not by palpation. Sometimes, by the way, especially under the stress of the exam, it is very difficult to locate the apex by palpation. So whether you are in the respiratory system examination or in the long clinical consultation, your patient is bronchiectasis, right? After you finish auscultation, check using your stethoscope in the right side and in the left side for the apex. When I did okay. this in the exam, it was very clear that the apex is in the right side. So my diagnosis was straightforward, Cartagena syndrome. So someone before mentioned ciliary dyskinesia. And someone else mentioned Cartagena syndrome. What is the difference between ciliary dyskinesia and Cartagena syndrome? Uh, in the Cartagena syndrome, a patient has ABC feature, okay, I mean, azospermia before bronchitis C4 ciliary problem. Mm -hmm. And as well as uh, dextrocardia, okay, in mm -hmm. Cartagena. But in, in, in the uh, ciliary dyskinesia, Patients may not have the, any heart problems in terms of location, as well as any uh, any uh, problems uh, with the uh, what you said. Span, what okay. you said is okay. However, let me rephrase rephrase it. Okay, ciliary dyskinetic syndromes are many. It is not a diagnosis. It is not a single diagnosis. One of them is Cartagena syndrome. One of them is Cartagena syndrome. They will have the features of primary ciliary dyskinesia like sinusitis, bronchiectasis, azospermia, infertility. In addition to that, in order for you to say that this is Cartagena syndrome, you need to have a triad. In addition to the features of ciliary uh, dyskinesia, you need to have a triad. Okay, one of them is situs in invertus. Situs invertus. Situs invertus. Okay. In addition mm -hmm. to bronchiectasis, sinusitis, or nasal polyp. Bronchiectasis, sinusitis, or nasal polyp. Okay? Mm -hmm. So primary ciliary dyskinesia plus the triad of bronchiectasis, nasal polyp, or sinusitis, and situs invertus. So Cartagena syndrome is actually one of the primary ciliary dyskinetic syndromes. Primary ciliary dyskinetic syndromes. Okay? So in total, uh, regarding your score, we said skill F is two out of four, skill C is two out of four, and then skill A because you omitted examining for the apex position. Let us say uh, three out of four. The rest of them you will get the full mark. So you will lose around two and three, five and two, seven. Oh yeah. So you will get around 21 to 22 out of 28. Okay, although, by the way, I like your approach. You are very really mm -hmm. well uh, organized and systematic, but you need to take care of the underlying cause of uh, bronchiectasis. It will affect you a lot, okay? Mm -hmm. So let us assume that I want to cover this scenario. Whenever I have got a patient who, who is complaining of breathlessness and cough, okay, I enter the station, right? Hello there, my name is Dr. Fire, one of the medical doctors in the clinic today. Is it Mr. Bakar? Yes, doctor. So I would like to ask you a few questions and I need to examine you. Is that okay? You have to take the admission. I would like to ask you a few questions regarding your health and I would like to examine you. Is that okay? Yes, doctor. Here immediately, I will start with open question. I'm not going to tell him that it came to my knowledge that you are complaining of cough and press test. Please tell me about them. No. Keep your open question wide open. So please tell me what brought you into clinic today. What brought you into clinic today? Because in this way, he will volunteer important information. He will not speak only about the cuff and breast sisters. Yes, doctor, I have had cuff and shortness of breast since the past 10 years. He gave me the complaint and he gave me the duration. I am not improving. It is not improving at all, doctor. It is getting worse, despite I received many treatments before. He gave you also the course and progression Okay, so here, which one you should start first? Which one is, is going to give you the diagnosis? Is it the cuff or breast essence? What do you think? 
كاف اكزاكتلي بريس اس اس انيمي كان كوز بريس اس اس هارد فيلي كان كوز بريس اس اس اني ثينج كان كوز بريس اس اس ماي فيني جرافيس كان كوز بريس اس اس ات از فيري نون سبيسيفيك سيمتوم اي ام جوينج تو انالايز ذا ذا بريس اس اس بيكوز ات از ون اوف ذا مين كومبلين هاويفر اي دو نوت اكسبكت ذات ات ويل جيف مي ذا دايجنوز So I will start with the cuff. It is more specific. Okay, for how long has it been going over? How did it start suddenly or gradually? Is it getting worse or getting better? Any specific time during the day or night that the cuff is getting worse? Any good days and bad days? For example, sm uh, smoker's cuff. I mean, early COPD or COPD in general, the cuff will get worse during winter time, right? COPD usually the cuff is going to get worse during winter time. Regarding asthma, asthma symptoms in general will get worse late night or early morning. Late night or early morning. They will have dry cough, breathlessness, chest tightness, and noisy chest. I mean wheezing. Four symptoms. Dry cough plus WTB, wheeze, tightness, chest tightness. Just tightness, wheeze, okay, uh, breathlessness, and dry cough. Okay, all of them will get worse by late night or early morning. So after asking the time question, I will move to the key question in cuff. What is the key question in cuff? I mean the question which oh. will give you the diagnosis or differential. Dry or uh, productive. Dry, you, dry. Exactly. Exactly. You are dealing with cuff, right? You will ask whatever you want. For how long? How did it start suddenly or gradually? But basis wise, the question which will give you the diagnosis or will narrow your differential diagnosis is going to be, is it dry or do you cough up anything? Do you cough up any phlegm? It is not sputum. Phlegm. Do you cough up any phlegm or is it a dry cough? If he says that it is a dry cough i'm going to ask about the other symptoms i mean wtb breathlessness tightness and wheeze and all of them are going to get worse by late night early morning if he say yes doctor i do cough up some phlegm phlegm there is phlegm with this cough sputum here i'm going to analyze the sputum amount frequency color sometimes if it is uh, uh, if there is infection it will be offensive phlegm okay any blood streaks on it do you cough up blood okay so this patient he will tell you that doctor i was diagnosed with asthma and i was taking the blue inhaler he means salbutamol brown inhaler he means serotide steroid and it is not getting better at all it is getting worse doctor currently I, I have got cuff, which is productive. So productive cuff goes against asthma, right? Asthma, usually the cuff is dry. Mm -hmm. So right. when someone tells you that asthma is not responding for, to treatment, and he tells you that the cuff is productive of sputum, most likely this is bronchiectasis, and the underlying cause is allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. However, I am not going to to be 100% sure that this is a diagnosis. Still, I have to mention the other differentials, especially the more common differentials like infection, for example, okay? So, this patient is going to tell you that I have got asthma, not responding to treatment, and I have got productive cough. Do you cough up any phlegm? Yes, doctor, copious amount. He will tell you half cup every day, half cup every day. Color, yellow, green, any blood, no blood. So I finished the analysis of the cuff. I removed to analyze the breathlessness. Okay. And then I will finish the system involved, which is the cardiopulmonary system. Most importantly, I need to know whether this is related to the heart or not. Regarding the breathlessness, does it get worse with exercise? Do you feel breathless while lying flat? Do you wake up at night with choking sensation? To open the window, searching for air. What am I describing here? 
هارد فين Exactly. Okay, and don't forget the ankle swelling. So my patient is having breast stresses, handcuff, right? I will never go unless I do full analysis for the cardiopulmonary system. Cardiopulmonary system. So when someone has got cuff, which is productive of his sputum, what is the differential here? We know that when, when, when the cuff is dry, most likely this is asthma. Asthma, most likely, basis-wise, I'm, I'm speaking. However, on the other hand, if the patient is producing sputum, what could be the differential? It could bronchitis is pneumonia as well as TB, depending upon the topic. Exactly. History. Exactly. Depending. This is very nice. Depending is very important. Depending on the rest of the analysis. I know one of the candidates, when she went to the exam, the, she found that the patient is wearing mask. Yo, so this is, must be infectious. Must be infectious cause. Then she went and analyzed uh, the symptom, cough and breathlessness, and he is asthmatic. This is, must be uh, asthma exacerbation. Then the patient told her that there is a sputum. Or oh, this is again is asthma. So my advice, don't think about the diagnosis unless you finish your assessment. Finish your assessment first, okay? In general, cough which is productive sputum, basis wise, Think about bronchiectasis, 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 and then the other causes. Because they, believe me, they will never bring a patient of heart failure, acute heart failure to the exam, okay, or pneumonia. If the patient is going to be toxic, febrile, he needs submission to receive antibiotic. They cannot bring him to the exam, okay? Foreign body, tuberculosis, okay? So bronchiectasis, tuberculosis, Pneumonia, heart failure. Bronchiectasis, tuberculosis, pneumonia, heart failure. Bronchiectasis, tuberculosis, pneumonia, heart failure. Regarding pneumonia, as we mentioned, the patient is going to be acute and toxic and febrile. You will detect the fever within the constitutional symptoms. Tuberculosis, chronic history. Okay. And then within the constitutional symptoms, you will mention fever, mighty sweat, weight loss. In the social history, you have to ask about travel history. And you have to ask about contact with coughing patient. Contact with coughing patient. Previously in the history session, they brought a patient with tuberculosis, but no travel history. When you ask about his job, he will tell you, uh, I am a police officer and I work at the borders. So he deals with immigrants. Okay, so still you will put the patient as uh, the diagnosis uh, uh, tuberculosis, despite there is no travel history. Okay. Heart failure, you will detect other heart-related symptoms within the cardiovascular system. Okay, ankle swelling, uh, orthopnea, progesterone, eternal dyspnea, and so on. Okay. Regarding bronchiectasis, here in this case, it should be your first differential. Okay. So I will finish analyzing the main complaint. I will finish the system involved. I will come to the constitutional symptoms. Okay, and then I will start the systemic review. In particular, uh, uh, in, in our patient today, you need to check the GI analysis for steatorrhea, steatorrhea, because if the patient has got features of bronchiectasis, and then he has got steatorrhea, and he has got infertility, and he has got osteoporosis, for example, and he has got diabetes, then this is cystic fibrosis, right? If he mentioned tummy pain radiated to the back, what could be the, the diagnosis? Pancreatitis. Pancreatitis, exactly. Okay, so within the GI, never leave the GI system without asking specifically about steatorrhea. And I'm not going to, uh, to tell the patient steatorrhea, of course. Pale, bulky, offensive stool, which is difficult to flush. Pale, bulky, offensive, difficult to flush. Pale, bulky, offensive, difficult to flush. Okay. When you come to the genitourinary system, if the patient mentioned prothiurine, what do you think? What could be the reason? Amyloidosis. Exactly, proteinuria and amyloidosis because amyloidosis can happen with any long-standing inflammatory process. Whether this is SLE or rheumatoid arthritis or bronchiectasis or familial Mediterranean fever, anything which can cause long-standing inflammation can result in amyloidosis Amyloidosis is going to give you a nephrotic syndrome, and nephrotic syndrome will give you proteinuria. And proteinuria, the patient will complain of proteinuria. 
this is in the unitarian system the most important question is pro theory pro theory okay when you come to the past medical history past medical history you need to search for you need to ask the patient so have you got any long medical te uh, term problem at all like what doctor like any medical condition which you call cystic fibrosis any problem with the defense system or any history of allergies or asthma history of allergies and asthma for allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis history of problem with the defense system like what like aids like hypo gamma globulinemia okay gamma globulinemia will cause repeated childhood infection and this is usually complicated by bronchiectasis okay okay so i have a uh, question regarding this yeah case. yeah tell me please tell me a uh, patient was saying i uh, i have been diagnosed case of bronchial asthma taking inhaler mm -hmm. but not improving which is diagnosed mm -hmm. by the gp so in mm -hmm. the asthma case, uh, 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 rider in the book of rider, they said, okay, any patient with asthma, we should evaluate, okay, is it, yeah. in which he was diagnosed. Is it diagnosed mm -hmm. by any blood test or just on clinical findings? Or who mm -hmm. diagnosed the case? So that's why I'm just uh, seeking, okay, yeah. is it confirmed or just GP uh, suspected this could be asthma? Because the patient was not improving by inhaler. See, uh... If asthma is highly probable, sometimes you will not need to, to do any spirometry, right? If it is high, mm -hmm. highly probable. Okay. 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 Yeah. However, this question is important, yes. How was the diagnosis came about? Did you do any blowing test? Did you yeah. consult any chest doctor? You need to ask those questions. Okay. Um, so when you, you start your exam yeah. uh, regarding Regarding, uh, uh, after you finish the systemic review, you will go to the PDFs, past medical history, drug history, family history, social history. Within the social history, in addition to smoking and alcohol and job, you need to ask about housing conditions and contact with coughing patients. Pets at home is very important. Maybe this patient has got uh, 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 extrinsic allergic alveolitis, right? Appeared before. Uh, the patient was having uh, asthma symptoms, deteriorating asthma symptoms, a low-grade fever, and he has got parrot at home in the Barbara. So the diagnosis was uh, extrinsic allergic alveolitis. Yeah. And you need also to add the sexual history because of AIDS. You need also, uh, you need also to ask about uh, uh, whether the patient is, I mean, tried b uh, before to, to have children or not. Any problem with fertility, any history of travel, any history of contact with coughing patient, and so on. When you start examination, always try to start with the vital chart. You did not check the, the vital chart. The patient has got breathlessness. This is very dangerous. You have to check the mm -hmm. vital chart, and you have to request full bedside set of observations, including SpO2, okay, pulse rate, blood pressure. And then after that, you can start your local examination. Local examination, if your your problem is breathlessness and cough, here try to start by uh, 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 the tracheal position and do the chest expansion, not only auscultation. Okay, because you need to know, is it unilateral pathology or bilateral pathology? Okay, so if the trachea is central and chest expansion affected globally, this is bilateral pathology, right? Not like when the yeah. trachea is deviated to one side and that side is less moving. It is different, right? Yes. Whenever the patient, whenever there is crepitations, you have to ask the patient to cough, to give you a strong cough. Sometimes uh, the crepitations will disappear. Sometimes it will increase, by the way. Okay. However, this is important to, to differentiate bronchiectasis from other causes like fibrosis. Okay. Uh, most importantly, after you finish the local examination, try to do general examination or general survey. Okay. 
starting by the general look of the patient. And then you will go to the hand, search for clubbing. Okay, search for any features of uh, uh, rheumatological conditions, rheumatoid arthritis, SLE. Uh, most importantly, in the examination, you have to check for lymph nodes. You have to check for lymph nodes. Okay. And then you can search also or do general examination to search for the underlying cause. For example, let us assume that the patient has got features of chronic liver disease. He has leukonychia or uh, uh, debitrine contracture or ascites. What do you think could be the underlying diagnosis? So, so can you repeat again, sir? And I'm patient with? If the patient is having bronchiectasis with signs of chronic liver disease, mm -hmm. what could alpha be the underlying deficiency? Exactly, alpha 1, alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency, exactly. Okay. Check also uh, 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 the eyes for pallor, not only pallor, but sometimes you might find red injected conjunctiva, right? And peripheric phase. What could be the reason? Secondary polycythemia as a result of long-standing hypoxemia. And also when it comes to the heart, you need to check for loud P2, for a sternal heave, for what? For pulmonary hypertension and check the ankle for a swelling, mm -hmm. which might be related to core pulmonary. So this is your general survey. Starting from the hand, clubbing, okay, and then move to... Uh, uh, the eyes for any features of secondary polycythemia. Look for peripheral uh, stigmata of chronic liver disease. Feel for pulmonary hypertension, lower limb edema for core pulmonary. So the first examiner question was, what is your differential diagnosis? First, what is, the, what is your diagnosis? And then what could be the cause? So your first differential here has to has to be bronchiectasis. Underlying cause for bronchiectasis, what could be the differential? If I ask you, what could be the differential okay. for? Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, differential mm -hmm. bronchiectasis, it could be due to uh, 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 underlying cause of differential or just the diagnosis, differential of diagnosis? Underlying uh, cause for bronchiectasis in general. Okay. In general, underlying cause in this patient, uh, first of all, uh, uh, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. Considering patient mm. is, uh, is there any childhood infection or not? Third, it could be due to um, lymphoma because in this patient is group. Uh, Why did you mention some. specifically lymphoma? Uh, be, uh, any any mass lesion that actually causes exactly. So in places, yeah. in places, don't go for. It's straightforward diagnosis from the start, lymphoma. How lymphoma is going to cause bronchiectasis? By a large lymph node compressing the, the airway, resulting in bronchiectasis, right? This can happen also with sarcoidosis, with tumor, mm -hmm. with tuberculosis, any infection, right? Or mm -hmm. malignancy. So no need to mention lymphoma in particular. You need to be well organized. First, I'm going to, to tell the examiner that it could be congenital and it could be acquired. It could be congenital. And it could be acquired, right? Congenital, like what? We have got mainly five. Okay. First, cystic mm -hmm. fibrosis and Young syndrome are together. First, uh, cystic fibrosis and Young syndrome. Young syndrome, by the way, it is re uh, regarded as genetic variant of cystic fibrosis. Very similar clinically to cystic fibrosis. They will have bronchiectasis, sinusitis, obstructive as a spermia leading to male infertility. It is a leading cause of male, infer uh, male infertility, by the way, Young syndrome. So these are together because they are similar. And then primary ciliary dyskinesia in general, and specifically Cartagena syndrome. Cartagena syndrome is one of the primary ciliary dyskinesias, and it's a triad of bronchiectasis, nasal polyvore sinusitis, and situs invertus. That's why I need to ask not only about the lower respiratory tract system, no. Also, the upper respiratory tract, any nasal stuffing, crusting, congestion, and so on. Sinusitis, okay. And also, within my examination, I need to check for the abix position to rule out situs invertus. If the abix is in the right side, you got the diagnosis. This is Cartagena syndrome. 
So cystic fibrosis and young syndrome together, primary ciliary dyskinesias, one of them is Cartan syndrome, and alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. These are the congenital causes. Uh, yellow nail syndrome. Acquired. You... Sorry? Yellow nail syndrome, can you include in it? Yellow nail syndrome, yes, you, you can you can include, but you, you cannot mention all the congenital causes because there are so many, by the way. Just mention one of one or two of the uh, reasons, and that's enough. But you have to first mention that it could be congenital, it could be acquired. Congenital like, for example, give one or two examples. Acquired like, when you come to acquire, better to start with infection, but it's common. Because it, is, uh, uh, it could be the commonest cause. Infection like what is the Coccus pneumoniae, Staph aureus, Mycobacterium avium complex, Pseudomonas, Klebsiella, tuberculosis, Mycoplasma, viruses like pertussis, influenza, herpes, many, 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 many infections. I don't need, need even to mention a specific type of infection. Okay, so infection, after infection, immediately move to inflammation. What do you mean by inflammation? Autoimmune conditions. Inflammation without bacteria, sterile inflammation, autoimmune condition. What else? It could be allergy. Allergy like what? What is the commonest allergy which result in bronchiectasis? Bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. Bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. How to suspect bronchopulmonary aspergillosis? Long standing symptoms similar to asthma, but not responding to asthma treatment. How you are going to confirm the diagnosis? Is in field count, IgE level, aspergillus precipitant. And if you do CT scan, usually it is going to be central bronchiectasis. And very dramatic response to steroid. So infection, inflammation, allergy, obstruction, obstruction. This is how to mention. I'm not going to tell the examiner lymphoma, no. Obstruction, like what? Like foreign body, like tumor, like a large lymph node. This is my concern when it comes to bronchitis. Mm -hmm. I don't want to mention the, the cause of lymphadenopathy or a large lymph node. It can be due to anything, infection or tumor or malignancy or metastasis or whatever. However, it is causing bronchitis through obstruction. So infection, inflammation, allergy, obstruction, Obstruction can be for embodied tumor or a large lymph node. And then traction. Traction bronchiectasis. There will be other pathology. For example, fibrosis. It will result in traction of the bronchi, and this traction will be complicated by bronchiectasis. So acquired infection, inflammation, allergy, Obstruction and traction. Infection, inflammation, allergy, obstruction, and traction. Infection, inflammation, allergy, obstruction, and traction. Okay. Clear? Mm, sir, I have a question here. Traction Tell means. Me. There will be other pathology like fibrosis. Okay, long standing fibrosis. It will exert. Traction, traction, I, I mean, it will pull the bronchi, the small airways. And this pulling mechanism will result in damage to the airway. Eventually, it will be complicated by bronchiectasis. Okay? Clear? Is it clear? Yes, clear. Okay. So... Doctor, please, last one, yeah. traction. Traction, traction, bronchitis, traction, bronchitis. This uh, complicates any fibrosis. Not only Dr. fibrosis, I any. Sorry? I had a question, please. Yeah, tell me, please. Yeah. Uh, uh, why in this case we say the bronchitis on top of uh, allergic bronchopulmonary? Why not, uh, why differential? What in favor in it allergic is differential. bronchopulmonary? Okay, okay, so it so... is differential. I highlighted that. Don't mention only uh, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. Hundred percent. Can no. be repeated childhood infection. It could infection. be repeated childhood infection. It oh. could be 
bronco pulmonary aspergillosis. It could be associated with any uh, other pathology. It could be COPD, for example, association with uh, bronchitis, especially that there is wheezes. Uh, okay. uh, 30% of COPD cases, by the way, complicated by bronchitis. However, what again is the COPD in this case? He's young and he's not smoker, right? He's yes. young and he's not smoker. So this is again is a COPD. Hmm. However, it's a differential. Why did we put allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis on top of the list? Because the presentation is classical in this case. Long-standing symptoms. Uncontrolled asthma. Similar to asthma, not responding to asthma treatment. Hmm. And also the, the, the cough is productive, copious amount of sputum. This is again it's asthma, right? Yes. This is classical. Doctor how yeah. can I differentiate between uh, uh, allergic bronchopulmonary and extrinsic allergic in examination and the history? Extrinsic allergic alveolitis, the presentation is going to be acute. Acute cough and breathlessness after exposure to organic dust. The patient will have wheeze, just like acute asthma, uh, asthma attack. However, in the history, he will tell you that there is exposure to organic dust. For example, he will tell you that there is a part at, uh, 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 at my home. Okay. And then he will have also low grade fever. The presentation is going to be acute. Allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, it is chronic asthma symptom not responding to treatment and the cough is productive. Cough is productive. Clear? Extensive allergic um, he will tell you that I have got cough, breathlessness for the last two to three days, a low-grade fever. And he will have source of organic dust at home. Okay? Clear? Yes, uh, clear. Yeah, can you? Uh, the, the extrinsic allergic uh, alveolitis, it will usually present as a fibrosis rather than a bronchiectosis, right? Complicated. It, eventually, if not treated, it will be complicated by, by fibrosis. Okay, yes. Yeah, eventually it can be because it's inflammation. Yes, Any inflammation can be later on. Yeah, exactly. But acute extrinsic allergic alveolitis is something different. Doctor, you so, mean uh, doctor? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, doctor, yeah. I have fibrosis. Okay. Sorry, I didn't hear you. That you mean that bronchitis is complicated by fibrosis or fibrosis complicated by bronchitis? Fibrosis. Fibrosis will be complicated sometimes by bronchiectasis and vice versa, okay. by the way. Vice versa is mm -hmm. also correct. Even bronchiectasis sometimes can lead to fibrosis. Okay, however, I was, I was speaking about Doctor, traction bronchiectasis. Traction bronchiectasis. Doctor, okay. I have one question. Just I, let me please I, uh, uh, finish finish the uh, the other differentials of the, uh, and then I will give you the chance. Okay, okay, okay. So, okay. whenever you are in the chest. You are, I mean, you are dealing with chest patient, regardless of this is clinical examination or long clinical consultation. Try to keep a fixed way to present your finding. So let us assume that you ask me, how are you going to investigate this patient? So I will start with basic investigations. Basic investigations including differential leukocyte count, ASR, CRP, looking for any evidence of infection or inflammation. A sputum microscopy and culture. RFT, electrolyte, LFT, I will finish the basic investigation and then immediately I will move to imaging, starting by the X-ray. X-ray, it is fixed. I will start by X-ray and then move to CT scan and then move to pulmonary function test. And while me mentioning the imaging or the test, I have to tell the, uh, the examiner looking for what? So basic investigations including Differential leukocyte count, ESR, CRP, looking for any evidence of infection or inflammation. Hemoglobin level, hemoglobin and blood count to look for anemia or secondary polycythemia as a result of long standing hypoxemia. Then I will move to the imaging. X ray, I'm dealing with bronchiectasis, right? Looking for tra tram line appearance. Tram line appearance. Let us assume I'm, I'm dealing with COPD. Looking for signs of hyperinflation, interstitial lung disease, looking for reticular nodular shadowing. And then after the X-ray, I will move to the CT scan. I'm dealing with bronchiectasis, right? 
looking for signet ring appearance. Here, the examiner will stop you. In my exam, the examiner did ask about signet ring appearance. The, the candidate who did the case in Islamabad Center, the examiner asked her about signet ring appearance. I don't know, they like it. Signet ring appearance means that the bronchial diameter is greater than the adjacent arteriole. Okay? So the, the, the general appearance in CT is going to be just like a ring, signet ring appearance. Let us assume my, my case was not bronchiectasis. It was uh, uh, interstitial lung disease. Looking for any evidence of honeycombing or ground glass appearance. So I will modify the findings according to my case. However, I have to have a fixed approach of mention investigation. After X-ray, I will move to the CT. After CT, I will move to the pulmonary function test. In our case, looking for obstructive picture with reduced transfer factor because I'm dealing with bronchiectasis, right? COVD, looking for obstructive picture with reduced transfer factor. Again, however, if I'm dealing with restrictive lung disease, interstitial lung disease, looking for restrictive picture with reduced transfer factor. Then I will move to investigation regarding the acute setting. In the acute setting, I would want to do ABG looking for type 2 respiratory failure because here I'm dealing with bronchiectasis. If my case was interstitial lung disease, type 1 respiratory failure. After you finish basic investigations, imaging and EB, uh, ABG, imaging, uh, with imaging you will finish uh, the pulmonary function test and then move to ABG and then investigation for the underlying cause. Investigation for the underlying cause. This is very important. An investigation for complication. It is not required to mention investigation to search for all the underlying cause. However, the most likely diagnosis you have to mention some investigation for the most likely diagnosis. For example, I mentioned infection. I have to tell him that sputum culture, microscopy and culture. I mentioned allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. I have to mention aspergillus precipitant, IgE level. Okay, and then investigation for complication uh, when when it is related to respiratory system, it is always ECG and echocardiography. Looking for any evidence of pulmonary hypertension or core pulmonary ECG investigation for complications in terms of ECG and echocardiography. Looking for any evidence of pulmonary hypertension or core pulmonary. By the way, vitamin D level is relevant here. Any idea why? If you do not mention, by the way, it will not affect your score. Still, you can get the full mark. However, it is directly relevant when you are dealing with malabsorption due to malabsorption. Not, not only malabsorption. Not only malabsorption. Tuberculosis. However, tuberculosis. I don't know why you mentioned tuberculosis. What Related is your point? Actually, uh, due to mal malabsorption, it's not well known. COVID, by the way, vitamin D. Uh, when you have uh, low vitamin D level, it's associated with poor prognosis. Uh, previously, it was even included in the, in the COVID protocol, vitamin D and calcium. However, vitamin D, by the way, is very common in patients with bronchiectasis and correlates with markers of disease activity. Okay, if the patient of bronchiectasis has got low level of vitamin D, he will have poor prognosis. Okay, and also low levels of vitamin D will increase the risk of infection uh, uh, with pseudomonas. However, this is not for the exam. This is just information for yourself. Even if you do not mention vitamin D level within your investigation, it's not going to affect your score. Okay, so this is how to mention the investigation. When it comes to management plan, non-pharmacological and then pharmacological, Non-pharmacological in, in form of patient education and counseling, social, psychosocial, nutritional support, stop smoking, vaccination as appropriate, physiotherapy and postural drainage. Here, this is very important. Physiotherapy and postural drainage for the sputum. 
And then I will come to pharmacological treatment, antibiotics, steroid, oxygen, bronchodilators. Antibiotics, steroid, oxygen, bronchodilators. And then there's even surgical treatment, by the way. Sometimes if you have got localized area of bronchiectasis, which is poorly responsive to treatment, it might be taken away by surgery, resection. Sometimes it is done for massive hemoptysis. Okay, clear? Clear? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay, so uh, someone wanted to ask a question before. Yes, doctor, you can ask. So the differential for our uh, our our case, bronchiectasis, it could be also tuberculosis, it could be COPD, but again, is that the patient is young, he is non smoker, copious amount of sputum production, so tuberculosis, uh, a bronchiectasis on top, then it could be tuberculosis, then at last COPD. What was the differential for? Bronchiectasis. It could be infection. It could be allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. It could be congenital causes such as immune deficiency and repeated childhood infection. It could be cystic fibrosis. Again, is that he did not mention steatorrhea. Anything else it could uh, you will mention the differential and again is that there is no unknown. This thing, because sometimes the, the examiner is going to ask you what else, what else, what else. Okay, so here you'll start mentioning the least likely diagnosis and again is that is this and this and this. Okay, clear? Dr. Hassan? Yeah, uh, tell me please. Uh, does alpha, anti uh, alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency cause both uh, COPD and, uh, and bronchiectasis? Yes, it can cause both emphysema, uh, it can cause uh, bronchiectasis, it can cause liver cirrhosis, Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Regarding high, someone is asking about uh, hypogammaglobulinemia in the history, how to ask? Repeated childhood infection, full stop, nothing else. Repeated childhood infection. Okay, investigation wise, you can you can do immunoglobulin level, immune quantitative immunoglobulin level. Okay. Hope this was clear. Hope this was useful. Thank you for joining today. If you have any question, please post it to the group. We'll try to, to find the answer together. Thank you for joining today. See you the next session, inshallah. And good night. Thank you. Thank you, sir, uh, for offering me this case. Thank you so much. This thank you. Very... Good Goodbye. Yeah. Thank you.